you see us strengthening institutions across the continent of Africa. I will continue with you right away, uh, Honorable Dr. Rashid. Uh, you are, of course, member of Parliament there in Ghana. Uh, we were looking at how uh, the, the pending elections uh, in the year 2023 across Africa will redefine uh, what we call democracy in uh, contemporary Africa. And, of course, we will be glad that we get your own viewpoint on this uh, particular uh, subject, which is of utmost interest to us? Well, um, Africa has come a long way. Um, from where we got to, which was referred to as the lost decade between the 1970s and 80s, we had gone through a lot of turbulence after we, have, we, after we liberated ourselves from the colonial regimes, we ran through lots of coup d'etats, lots of violent attacks on leadership and civil wars all across the continent you know with rebels climbing to the stage and taking power and all that and all that this brought africa to a lot of pain and we got to the late 1980s when we thought that look the alternative was to go for democracy so the late 90s when we went for democracy it was to say Forget the past. The past is gone. Now free choice is the area to go. And so we decided that um, we will make leadership emerge through free choice. And that has been working for a while until there is a resurgence again of various coups and the disturbance of the political system. But democracy as a whole, if that is well, will solve many of the uh, political uh, challenges Africa has. When people are given the choice to select a leader and the leader emerges, they still have the power to push him aside or to set him aside. And so democracy is critical, is crucial. It gives people the forthright, uh, forthrightness to be able to move forward and backwards in how they want their leadership to emerge. And it strengthens people's ability you know, to dictate what they want. But as we go along, many, many leaders begin to see democracy as an abstraction because they want to extend themselves beyond the limited period allocated to them. For example, why will anybody want to have a leadership uh, beyond the four term or five term allocated by the constitution? If you have that in mind, what we are telling people is that you want to extend yourself beyond your future and against the will of the people and that's going to create a problem. For me, democracy as a free choice uh, system of free choice is very important if we have to stop all these conflicts, if we have to stop people from being autocratic and being over-exploitative, and it enables us to resettle and um, have fear, you know, of the sovereign will of the people. The will that chooses them must be the will that also tells the, sets them aside. If we are able to set up a system where the will of the people predominates you know, and suppose the will or the suppose the the, the 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 rule of law in whatever we do, then it means that Africa would have moved several uh, several kilometers or mile, miles into a system of progress. Unfortunately, in many countries, it's the same democratic systems they exploit to the point that you, you forget that you're in a democracy. I have seen in, in, in a place like um, Uganda, where people are, are malhandled because they are opposing their leaders. I've seen people in other countries, like Rwanda, where leadership is so dominant that it becomes difficult for uh, people to get up and oppose, even though in Rwanda admire them for whatever achievements they have made so far, excellent country. Um, you, you, you see... In, in uh, places like North Africa, Central Africa, uh, sorry, North Africa, and indeed Central Africa and, um, you know, other places where people definitely are not the ones that we want to see happen in our democracies. They impose themselves, they impose their will, and the people begin to fear that that's not the kind of democracy they want. So we need to begin to look at what kind of democracy we want in Africa. And we need to safeguard the constitution as we project it into the future. We need to make sure we enlighten the people so they don't become accomplices to individuals who want to destroy the system. 
and who manipulate them and utilize them, they are well to their own advantage. I choose democracy, but I don't choose democracy that is manipulated by individual leaders. They cast their ballot, and of course, they should be educated about uh, uh, choosing the right leader, and of course, seeing that the leader meets the expectations or the aspirations of the young people in Africa in the years to come. We do not want to talk about poverty. We want to talk about uh, a, 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 a living standard that is favorable and that will see Africans, of course, live happily. Uh, let's continue with you, Honorable Dr. Rashid. In our preamble this day, we made mention uh, of a series of coup d'etats that brought especially uh, the, the West Africa, some of the West African countries. And of course, I want to understand, uh, in your own perspective, can we see uh, uh, this uh, coup d'etat that uh, occurred uh, a result of uh, a lapse or a fall in democracy in these uh, respective uh, uh, nations? Uh, let's get your perspective on this. Please, can you turn on the mic, Dr. Rashid? Yeah, well, thank you. Okay. What, what is very, very clear to all of us is that democracy is a very expensive business. It requires investment in understanding the system. It requires ensuring that the individuals who are contesting are well equipped. The person who is voting must understand the system and make a choice that has uh, a consequence beyond a personal gain, and there uh, must be an overall interest in what the outcome would be to the general being of people. And the person who is contesting must also understand that he's doing so to satisfy the broad majority of the people. These are very expensive things to come across, you know, to come by. Um, how do we get people to understand that the choices they make are for the general good? How do we get the individuals who are contested to, to know that they are doing so because they want to satisfy a broad majority of people? But how do we get the financing done to make sure that it is not much more expensive than the gains that are coming out of it? So it's very clear that you know we've come to a point when Africa must begin to appreciate wholly what democracy is bringing to us. Uh, I think that we have to appreciate the fact that democracy does not exist without the institutions that strengthen it. The institutions are very critical. And that uh, in order for us to make a move and ensuring that we sustain our democracy, we have to strengthen those democracies. Um, I'm getting it out of loss, out of context. Are you? I wasn't here at one point. Can you repeat part of the question? Yes, uh, uh, Dr. Rashid, we're asking, you know, uh, 2022, some nations across Africa uh, witnessed coup d'etat. I was asking to end this day. Yes. Can we say it's as a result yes. of a failed democracy, or is there any other uh, factor that necessitated uh, the uh, uh, turbulent moment uh, in this country that saw uh, the uh, forceful removal of some leaders across Africa? Yes, so when we get to understand the true import of democracy, mm -hmm. this overall bit and lapses in democracy will begin to relax, you know. But what we are getting is that people don't actually understand what democracy is all about because they are not benefiting out of it. Mm -hmm. People come into power and then they take advantage of the power they come into to benefit themselves uh, locally at the expense of the broad majority of people. So when they see a soldier man, a military officer walk in and announce the takeover. The same people who have elected the official are the same people who are jubilating. So it is because we need to build a very enlightened society, a conscious majority, and a majority that critical majority that understand what they are doing, and that they will, they will take democracy as a choice and not democracy as a choice of the privileged few. So I I, I think that the many coup d'etats that are happening. Is signaling to the um, attributable failure of democracy in these areas. Mm -hmm. I'm from Ghana, 
And democracy is such a deep-seated concept now. Anybody talking about who they task, um, it seems to be us. You know, even though we come to a point when we suffer, we suffer a lot of pain of uh, bad governance. But we, we, we don't see who the task as a result of bad governance. So we don't encourage it. But where it is still seen, who the task are still seen as an alternative. It means that the, the, the real concept of democracy has not sunk into the, the fabric of society. People do not see the democracy that they practice as an end, as, as a beginning and an end. For example, you have an election and you have another election, which is to confirm or disconfirm. So, you, you, so, so because they cannot see that happening in their lives, it's easy for a military officer to walk, walk in and then pronounce a coup d'etat and then you see people back in it. Well, but that tells you how fragile that democracy still is in Africa. In Africa, as we observe, we have a long way, a long way from when, uh, we decided that wars were the ones that should solve the problems in our chieftaincy struggle, and eventually we got colonized. And we thought that um, colonization was not going to help us. There was a need for us to take power. We took power, and people uh, autocratized their leadership. And then we got to a point when we said, Look, those are not what we wanted. We don't want people who stay on and on and on. Kabuzi Banda and Co. stay on and on and on. Uh, you know, we want a situation uh, beyond. Mobutu situation where uh, we can have young people who are coming in, qualified elected leaders. Mm -hmm. And so we get back to it. And then we are not able to sustain it. So we must get to a point in Africa when we say enough is enough. This is our Africa. This is our democracy. This is how we want to move. We don't want a situation where um, people who are tired of confronting leadership now begin to use military weapons fought by the people themselves to safeguard them, to hurt leadership, and to kill the people themselves. We are under, at all costs, in my country, at all costs, we insist that even if leaders are not, put them out. Don't encourage the military to come in. It is not a choice of leadership. It's not a choice for the people. They cannot be allowed to go on that way. And the military people who you think are coming to save us from the trouble, then become problem themselves. And, and it becomes difficult to move it forward. So I think that uh, the coup d'etat is beginning to happen in West Africa. I see it to our democratic strife. They are an embarrassment to our African leadership and African people. Uh, when Kuma said that we are beginning to have new Africans who will define who he is, we are defeating that concept of the African personality. Uh, we need to get back to the African personality and get a proud African who will get up and say, this is my country, these are my people, I will sacrifice and die for our people. Not the one who will steal money. This, I saw Sani Abacha when he was overthrown. The money he hauled away, the one carried trying to carry billions of dollars out of the country, and he, she was arrested. I saw in the last regime of Nigeria how billions of dollars were given out to fight Boko Haram, and people kept it to themselves. This is not the Africa we want. We must mention it, we must get to the and tell the truth ourselves, to ourselves that we are losing it out. We are allowing the individual, the greed of the individual to supersede the interests of the general majority of people. I, and I think that we need to change this conception that democracy is about getting one person in power, getting their friends, and sharing the few resources we have, and getting the people to suffer for it. We, we need to move away from that. I have seen today in Ghana um, some politicians uh, deliberately stealing public money, making it difficult for us to have convinced the people that is, you know, we are, we, they are for us and we are for them. Mm -hmm. I'm a politician, and I keep saying that we need to change a leaf. We need to change our attitude towards our people and our and our economy and our resources and get committed. I want to see a situation where people get out of office you know, uh, and, and come out and become the individuals they went in for. They went in before they became politicians. So that you can be seen to have benefited so much from power that in the end, you are seen to be the one who stole money, you know. But the pain is that they go to churches and donate, and those are the people they love. 
I, I am accused all the time because I don't have money to give people because I've been a minister before. I don't have the money people have. And they keep telling me, I, I didn't do well. You have been a minister. How come um, at this time you are suffering to do politics and you are borrowing money? But that's the kind of leadership we want. Okay. We want to see a leader still being himself. If he didn't have money when he enters politics, he, your, your, your pay should not make you rich. And, and we don't want a situation where people are seen to be millionaires just because they are in power. I deplore it, and I think that Africa must be a change. There must be a change in Africa. And African leaders must set the examples. And Tanzania's president, former Tanzania's president, whatever the faults he had, I understand he was very good and committed. And those are the kinds of examples I'm talking about. Absolutely. Afrique Media. Le monde, c'est nous.